Got another Pioneer PDM 703 multi-disc CD changer. This one's got a bad optical block on it. This is a very common problem on this, and I'm gonna show you guys what happens on these blocks. This fault can actually be fixed because, well, as you'll see, the lens falls out of the pickup and it usually ends up inside the cabinet. If you can find it, you can put it back together and glue it in place. I'll show you how to do it. So here's our mechanism. I'll turn on the power and we'll observe what happens when I load, try to load a disc. No attempt to spin the disc. No attempt to read the disc. So we gotta check out the optical block and see whether it's even trying to focus. So we can check that out by just removing the optical block itself so that we can observe what's happening. So we'll remove the four screws that hold the optical block in place. That way I can still go through the motions, I can still run the mechanism through its paces and we'll see whether the optical block even attempts to focus and if we've got any laser light from it at all. So here's the optical, oh, well, I think we can see the problem right now on this. <laughs> There's no lens on the laser. That was a quite a common problem actually with these uh, silly pioneers is that the laser lens tended to fall out. If the optical lens is still inside the cabinet, there's a chance that I can put it back in and glue it back into place and make this unit work. So let's see whether the piece that's missing is anywhere to be found in the cabinet. I'm just gonna shut the power down here and uh, We'll turn this thing over and see if anything falls out of it. Providing nobody's been into this unit, then there's a possibility that the piece that's fallen off is still inside the mechanism. If someone's been into here though, all bets are off. Well, what do you know? I found a lens. So I gotta glue this back in place on this player and uh, hopefully that's going to make this thing work. So I gotta get something to glue this in with. I gotta find some glue that I can use to secure this lens. So let's uh, do that. So I'm just gonna use some general purpose low VOC white type glue. I probably got too much there on the end of my... I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the edge here because that's really the only place it needs to be is right on the edge of the of the laser assembly and then we'll take the, the lens fit the lens back into the press the lens in and I'm gonna let this dry for a while and then we'll we'll test it out make sure it's in straight looks like it's in there okay actually I shouldn't even have to let the stuff dry because it's not going to uh, not going to fall out. I should be able to pop this in and just turn this thing on and see if it will read. If it does, then I'll, I'll let it dry. It's at least this way if I have to take it back out. As long as I do it before the glue sets up, it should be okay. So let's just, let's load the discs up and see if it's going to read. And it is reading. Play. 
Yes, it's reading. Okay, I'm going to eject the disc. At this point, I'm going to let this set up, and then we'll uh, put this back together. And this is a very common failure, by the way, on these uh, these these lasers. This was a very common failure, where that lens just falls out. So I'm going to let this set up for a while, and then we'll continue the repair once the glue has dried. Okay, that should be, I think, long enough to uh, for that set up. This uh, glue doesn't take that long to to set, and it's a fairly snug fit. So even if it wasn't glued in place, it's not going to easily fall out. laser back in and hook it up to the amplifier. I'm going to run this thing under test for several hours to make sure everything's good and then send it back to its owner. can't play it. I'll let this thing play for a while and uh, we'll make sure everything's still good on this and say hey, this was an easy fix. When you see these uh, Pioneer 6 disc changers very common problem is that lens falls out and usually you'll find it in the mechanism somewhere. So the unit's been playing now for about half an hour almost through this disc. I'm gonna let all the discs, it's got four discs and I'm gonna let all four discs play through I'm going to play for probably overnight and see if it's still, I'm going to put it on a repeat and see if it's still playing in the morning. And if it's still playing in the morning, then I'll uh, consider this repair a success. Well, this unit's been playing overnight. It's now the next day and uh, it's still playing. I'm going to check it out for RF level on here and then I'm going to put it together and send it on its way. This one was a pretty simple repair. Just the lens fell out of the laser, which is quite a common problem on uh, units of this design because it has gravity working against it. See normally on a CD player your CD goes in label side facing up and the laser is on the bottom but of course as you notice on this one these cartridge designs the discs go in upside down label facing down so the, the problem with that is gravity is pulling against that laser itself against the lens and they had a tendency to fall out which was quite common on these units. Laser would fall out, this machine wouldn't play. And usually it would find the lens inside the unit itself because they usually drop inside the mechanism and just get stuck in the bottom. And that's exactly what we had to do on this one. I give it a good shake and out pop the lens, put the lens back in place, unit's working. Nice simple repair. Something to keep in mind if you've got one of these units is those lenses did fall out. And this is, I've done dozens of them. So let's get the scope going. We'll look at the RF and see how the eye pattern looks. And then I'm going to button this thing up and send it on its way. As you can see, we got lots of signal coming off the laser. I'm seeing a bit of uh, amplitude fluctuation here. This is actually probably the eccentricity of the disc or the disc itself is not perfectly flat. The disc may have a slight bit of a warp in it. So it's uh, causing the RF to slightly shift, but it's not causing any, uh, any skipping or anything. It's looking good. And there's plenty of RF there. We're looking about what about 1.4 volts peak to peak here, I guess. This is a 200 milliwatt, 200 millivolt scale. So the RF is looking looking clean. It was what, what we're looking for is we're looking for a nice clearly defined diamond pattern here in the middle. And as you can see we get nice clearly defined diamond. That's changing tracks from one track to the next. But here's our, our diamond or eye pattern as it's called. And it's uh, very clear so no problems with this unit especially considering it's not a new unit it's a fairly old unit see here's a different disc as you can see that was just the disc that one disc was uh, change tracks 
that one disc was uh, was quite uh, had quite a bit of fluctuation. Could be a bit of warpage on the disc. And here's another disc. Again, right? So this is the third disc. And here, if I go back to disc number one, disc number one was the one that tended to have a bit of jitter there. And as you can see, that's the disc. That disc either the either the hole is not a hundred percent. Uh, you know the, the, the where they punch the hole in the middle of the disc here either the either the hole is not exactly in the center or the disc itself has picked up a slight warp but that's what's causing that problem there player itself other than that is fine so I'll put this through its paces so I'll just change discs here I'll go back to disc number one and you can watch what the mechanism does one of the strengths to this type of mechanism of its day was one you could use the same cartridge in uh, both your car and in, in the house right same cartridge worked in both the car decks and so I don't know the owner of this he's got multiple cartridges so he's got all these cartridges where he's got different playlists this is his Roger Arborson um, cartridge so he's got four discs in here so that was always the strength to these ones is that you could buy these cartridges and then just put whatever you wanted in them and just grab it and play it. Kind of like what I do with my MP3 player is I'll, I'll make a compilation disc of what I like and put it on one disc and it changes tracks really very quickly. This does it with conventional discs. The uh, carousel type players are obviously are quite a bit slower at, uh, at changing discs as are the jukebox ones. But uh, these were very quick and very convenient. That's why a lot of people like this design. Again, changing the discs is very quick. You can see that disc. See, that's the one that has the, the RF that's jumping up and down. This one here has got a fair bit of wobble in it too, this disc. You can see it in the reflection. But everything's working. All the discs are playing. It's played through them all several times now. I've been listening to it. It hasn't skipped a beat. So I think it's fairly safe to say. Another one's safe from the scrap heap. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one real soon. Bye for now.